Hello and welcome to today's online intelligence briefing focusing on future vertical lift. My name is Gareth Jennings and I'm the aviation editor and I will moderate today's session. The main challenge in the development of the next generation of helicopters is overcoming the speed barrier caused by the symmetry of flat or lift. Proposed new configurations of rotorcraft to try and overcome this issue include tilt rotors, compound helicopters, disc rotors, as well as improvements to conventional helicopters such as morphine rotor blades and enhanced power plants. The next generation of vertical lift aircraft is expected to be faster, have an increased payload and range, to be cost efficient, thus having low operation and support cost, and require increased survivability in highly contested and degraded environments against peer and near peer adversaries. NATO's Joint Air Power Competence Center stated in its future battlefield rotorcraft capability paper that survivability will include improving aircraft performance, masking acoustic, visual, infrared and electronic warfare signatures, and utilizing traditional systems and sensors. To reduce acoustic signatures in all phases of the flight profile, for instance, Airbus Helicopter's Blue Edge Blade features a double dog leg that is designed to reduce the helicopter's acoustic signature in urban environments while retaining normal flight performance characteristics. This is also featured on the Airbus H160 helicopter for the French Helicopter Interarmelager program. At the same time, advancement in engine technologies will improve helicopter performance and utility, such as improved time on station, increased mission radius, and quieter operations. In the US, efforts to develop a more powerful power plant for helicopters manifested in the improved turbine engine program for the US Army. In February 2019, the US Army selected the General Electric uh, T901, which offers more than a 50% increase in power compared to the previous uh, engines, as well as better fuel efficiency and lower life cycle cost while minimizing other changes. I will now hand over to Pat, who will provide an overview of the US FEL program, its capability sets, and current progresses. The Sikorsky Boeing SB1 Defiant is a coaxial compound helicopter based on the earlier Sikorsky X2 technology demonstrator powered by a Lycoming Honeywell T55 engine. The intention is to demonstrate a 100 knot or 180 km or 115 miles per hour improvement in speed to 230 knots, 426 kilometers per hour or 265 miles per hour a 60% greater combat radius, and a 50% better hot and high performance in the hover than current generation of U.S. Army vertical lift platforms. First flight was achieved in March 2019. Undisclosed issues arising during propulsion system testbed runs caused delays in flight tests. The Defiant achieved and topped the 100 knot speed in a test flight in January 2020. The aircraft uses a coaxial rotor and pusher propeller technology for a cruise speed of 250 knots while retaining an excellent low speed handling, efficient hovering, and safe auto rotation combined with a seamless and simple transition to high speed flight. Other technologies include fly by wire flight controls, counter rotating all composite rigid rotor blades, hub drag reduction, active vibration control and an integrated auxiliary propulsion system that includes a pressure propeller driven by the same gearbox that turns the main rotors. The Defiant is said to be particularly maneuverable with operational assessments providing positive results in terms of acceleration and deceleration with the rigid coaxial rotors, as well as the ability to make the radius of turns half as large compared to a conventional helicopter. The Sikorsky Boeing team has also released imagery showing a dedicated attack variant. While all variants appear to share much in terms of commonality, the attack version features the twin-seat tandem cockpit, weapons mounted on stub wings, and chin-mounted gun that are synonymous with this class of rotorcraft. This gunship is geared towards the U.S. Army's Capability Set 3, also known as Future Vertical Lift Attack Requirement. The Belt V-280 Valor utilizes the technology Bell honed on the V-22 Osprey tilt rotor, the main difference being that the engines remain fixed in place and is only the nacelles that rotate upward. The first flight was achieved in December 2017. In May 2019, Bell completed its final V-280 Valor tilt rotor key performance parameter testing by demonstrating low-speed agility maneuvers. 
The V-280 Valor performed its first autonomous flight in January 2020 with a pair of 20-minute sorties. The aircraft took off to a hover, climbed out, achieved level point, and performed waypoint navigation and climbs, turns, and descents. It also returned to its original takeoff point, performed a full descent to a hover, and landed automatically, all without the pilot's hands on the controls. The aircraft has a straight wing design, fixed engine nacelles, a tail dragger configuration, sliding side doors, and according to Bell, it produces reduced downwash because of its lower disc loading. It also features a triple redundant fly-by-wire flight control system. Bombs, gun pods, and rockets are mounted on pylons at the lower sides of the fuselage or in weapons bays in the fuselage undersides. Lockheed Martin provides Valor's fully integrated mission systems, including cockpit avionics and flight controls, day and night sensors, electronic warfare equipment, and weapon systems. Bell has achieved many accomplishments in its V-280 development, including a forward flight of more than 300 knots true airspeed, more than 110 flight hours, and more than 225 rotor turn hours, and greater than 50 degree bank turns. The aircraft has also demonstrated 4,500 feet per minute rate of climb and a sustained flight at 11,500 feet. Single, fer- single flight ferry of more than 595 kilometers, and in flight transitions between cruise mode and vertical takeoff and landing. Thank you, Pat. The following slide is a quick snapshot of the current status of the US FVL program from the US budget perspective. The FVL medium or capability set 3 appeared in the US presidential budget in fiscal year 2017, with the US Army as the lead service and the future armed reconnaissance aircraft in fiscal year 2020. Similarly, the US Marine Corps AURA program was first mentioned in fiscal year 2020. In April 2019, the US Army awarded five other transaction authority for prototype agreement deals for the FARA competitive prototype program, each worth 15 million per industry participant in the initial design phase of the FARA helicopter. Participants will then receive uh, 8.5 million in FY19 and 6.5 million in fiscal year 2020. The US Army is set to down select two contractor teams in March 2020 that will continue into the prototype phase of the program. These will receive about 735 million each from fiscal year 2020 to fiscal year 2023 and add 375 million in company funding for a total program value of $1.1 billion. The participants will have an aircraft ready to fly by November 2022 and conduct flight testing in November 2023. The requirement is expected to transition to a program of record in fiscal year 2024, and initial operation capability is expected to be achieved by 2028. As of January 2020, the US Army was considering plans to reduce spending on government furnished equipment for the FARA competitive prototype effort, namely the propulsion system, the 20mm cannon, the integrated munition launcher, and the modular open system architecture to accommodate a a 34 million reduction in fundings for fiscal year 2020. This reduction will not affect the program schedule. Nonetheless, the National Defense Authorization Act for FY 2020 reiterates that continued support for the future of vertical lift initiative is among Congress key priorities.